Transformation Church, how we doing? That was okay for me, but now I need you to give it up for Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Jesus up in here. Hey, listen, you can grab a seat, grab a seat, grab a seat. I'm about to do snow angels. I ain't even gonna preach, it don't matter. No, uh, man, I am so honored and excited to be with you today and share the Word of God. And uh, this is a special Sunday. It's a special Sunday for so many different reasons. Um, but what you need to know is anytime we gather around the Word of God, anytime we come together, God stands ready to meet us. Does anybody need a meeting with Jesus today? Anybody? Anybody? Well, hey, listen, uh, today's going to be good. I'm excited for the Word. I got to take a moment just to say thank you so much and truly how much I love Pastors Mike and Natalie. They are um, just everything to me, my family, my wife, my kids, and uh, I didn't make the cut for the video for some reason. Somehow I'm over the video, didn't make the video, but no, I'm joking. Hey, I just, I love y'all so much. I think you're back there. I love y'all. Happy birthday, and I'm with you till we die. Can we give it up for our pastors, pastors Mike and Natalie? Hey, listen, we, this is week 15 of crazy faith. Come on. Has anybody enjoyed this series so far? Hey, listen, today, if you haven't been here, I'm going to catch you up. All right, here you go. Crazy baby, maybe, wavy, daily, hazy, lady, trazing, hasty, FOMO, fugazi, blazy, training, gazy. I think I said a couple of the titles a couple of times. But anyways, if you haven't been with us, this series has been absolutely amazing. We've been talking about crazy faith and what that looks like in our lives and really what that means for us. And today we're going to take it a step further. So if you're ready for the word, I need you to say, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that was good. That was good. All right, turn in your Bibles to Mark 10, 45. Mark 10, 45. Does anybody have a real Bible? Like, hold your Bible up if your Bible don't need charging. Come on, holler at your boy. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, listen, Mark 10, uh, 46 actually is where we'll start. 10, 46, verse 46. We're going to have an amazing time gathering around the Word of God. This is what the Bible says. Mark 10, starting in verse 46. Then they reached Jericho. And as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. And a blind beggar, everybody say blind. blind. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48, be quiet. Many people yelled at him because they fake and they don't need a healing, apparently. It says, but he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said to them, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man, cheer up, they said, come on, he's calling you. The same jokers that was just telling him to be quiet are like, oh, he called you? I'll bet. What's up, man? Yeah, you better go to Jesus. they just fake. Anyways, fake people then, fake people now. Hallelujah. <laughs> so they called the blind man, cheer up, he's calling you. Verse 50, Bartimaeus threw aside his coat and he jumped up and came to Jesus. 51, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. The title of my message today, if you're taking notes, write this down, stating faith. Stating faith. Stating faith. Stating faith. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you. Lord, you're so good. You're so gracious. You're so merciful. Lord, I thank you right now that your Holy Spirit is in this room. Lord, I thank you today that as your word goes forward, Lord Jesus, lives will be changed. Lord, minds that have been separated or dealing with worry and fear, Lord God, that peace would come over their life. Lord, I thank you that where you are, Lord Jesus, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So I thank you that there is freedom in this place today. Lord, anoint me in this moment to speak uh, exactly what you would have me to say. It's in Jesus' beautiful name. Everybody said. Amen. Uh, I have a beautiful, beautiful wife and a beautiful baby boy. Uh, my wife's name is Abby Rose, and then our little boy's name is Arlo Phoenix. 
He is not cute. He's beautiful. I want to be very clear on that. Some of you are like, he's a boy. He's beautiful. Listen, look at this picture and tell me this baby ain't beautiful. That is a beautiful baby if I ain't ever seen one. Now, just leave that up the whole message. No, I'm just kidding. You can take it down. That's my little boy Arlo and my wife Abby. Here's the thing with Arlo. Arlo is getting this weird thing now that I haven't, I didn't expect. It's our first boy, and, and I didn't expect this. He's getting these things, and you may have experienced this as a parent. He's getting these weird things called opinions. Have you heard of these? He's eight months old, and he has opinions. Like, he just thinks that he knows what he needs to do. And he started this thing where when he uh, wants something, he just looks at me and goes, hmm. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, it's a little intimidating. It's a little disrespectful. And so one day he grabbed my phone, and I was like, you don't need, what are you doing with my phone? Like, you need to you, give me. And so I took my phone back, and he goes, eh. and I was like, did you, what? And I knew, because I knew in his head he was cussing at me. So I was like, all right, I'm going to give you another chance. He reached for it again. I said, you better back up in the name of Jesus. I put my, I backed the phone up. He goes, eh. I was like, okay, now I'm about to fight you. I don't care how big you are. You ain't going to. But I sat there, and in this moment, we and Abby have been talking. We're kind of having a transition. Like before, he was just eat, sleeping, and pooping. But now, we're actually kind of have to figure out how we want to parent him. Like, what are we going to do when he starts throwing fits? You know the classic, like, back arch where he's like, I'm not going to move. He does that when he gets in his car seat. He's screaming. And so we're having to think through, like, what do we want to do with Arlo as he starts freaking out? And so I started doing this thing. When he starts grunting at me and going, Ugh! it's very intimidating. I want to flick him in the nose or something weird, but I'm not going to do that. I walk up to him and I sit him down and I say, hey, listen, booty. I call him booty. I don't know where that came from. It was bear, then it was buka, then it was buka booty. I don't know. Anyways, I say, listen, Bubba, daddy loves you. And whatever you need help with, I can help you with it. But we do not grunt or yell to get what we want. Now, he has no idea what I'm saying at this point. He's eight months. He don't know. But I'm telling him, hey, listen, buddy, if you need something, just tell me. Like, as your father, I'll, I'll get it for you, but I need you to use your words. I need you to just tell me what exactly it is that you need. I don't need you just leaning in a certain direction, not just reaching for something sometimes. If you need something, you just let me know. Now, this premise that I want to work from with my son Arlo is to believe how God looks at us sometimes. And what I mean is you have faith. And sometimes your faith just wants to lean in a certain direction. It wants to reach for certain things. But there are some times where you reach a level of maturity where God will lean over to you and say, I just need you to use your words. Like, I need you to actually tell me what it is that you need. I need you to say out of your mouth what it is that you need for me to do for you. Now, some of you are still trying to figure out where I'm going. Um, have you ever seen a crazy person? Raise your hand if you've ever seen a crazy person. Like, they just crazy. If you ain't raising your hand, ugh. <laughs> um, anyways, how do you tell if a person is crazy? Like, sometimes they can just look at you, and if they're really crazy, they give you a look, and you're like, oh, yeah, they are crazy. Walk on the other side of the street. But the main way I've realized that you tell if someone is crazy is when they start talking. Go with me. It's not just when you walk up and look at them, you're like, oh, that you can tell they're crazy. It's only when they start saying things out of their mouth that it becomes crazy. Can I present to you today that crazy faith is not crazy until you start saying something? And some of us have just had faith that has been in your journal, it's been up on a shelf, but it's not crazy until you start talking. Is anybody awake this morning with me? Matter of fact, write down my first point. Write this down, write this down, because I need to make it so clear for you. It's not crazy faith until you start stating faith. It can't be crazy if it's just in your journal locked up on a Tuesday. How, how is somebody going to know you have crazy faith? It's when you walk up to things that are dead and say, yeah, that's going to live right now. It's when you walk up to things that where it looks like it can't work out and you say, this is going to work out. It's when you start stating faith. It's when you start saying things out of your mouth that don't seem to make sense. It doesn't feel like it's going to line up. It looks different than what you currently see. But when you start saying things out of your mouth, it turns from just faith to now it steps into a category of crazy faith where there's no other way that anybody can do it except for God. It's, it's stating faith. It can't be crazy until you start saying something. 
But here's the thing. I can tell some of you, you're, you're, just, you're not even tracking with me because you bought into this idea of just think good thoughts. Have you ever heard this before? Like, just think good thoughts. So if your marriage is going bad, you're just, man, I think, I think it's going to work out. I think it's going to make a difference. I think my finances are going to come together. I think that I'll make it into this college. I'm thinking that maybe one day I'll be able to be a blessing to other people. Here's the only problem with that. The power of life and death is not in your thoughts. The power of life and death does not reside up here. Proverbs 18, 21 says the power of life and death lies in your tongue. So until you start speaking some things out, until you start speaking some things out, there will always be things that should be dead that you're allowing to live because you haven't spoke to them yet. And in other categories, there will be things that should be alive, but you won't speak life to it yet. You're just, you're just hoping in a certain direction. You're just thinking maybe it will work out. You just, but the power of life and death comes in your mouth. It's what you say. It's when you start speaking the things. It's when you say out loud that I, I will be whole. I will be healed. My marriage will work out. I will be all God has called me to be. But here's the thing. What's crazy is the enemy knows this. He, you know the... You know he knows scripture, right? Like you think he don't, he was an angel. So if he knows the power of life and death is in your tongue, he's so glad when you think good thoughts. Let me break this down for you. Genesis 3, in Genesis 3, we see an interaction between Satan and Eve. It's in the form of a snake. It says there's a conversation that happens and the snake comes up to Eve and is like, hey, what you doing? Now pause. If I'm Eve and a snake starts talking to me, boy, what you doing? <laughs> but we don't see this from Eve. She has an interaction, an exchange. You know the story. She eats the apple, gives it to her dumb husband. He eats the apple. The fall of man happens. And we never hear or see in Scripture of Satan talking to another human out loud in this form. Follow me. When you just think good thoughts, you keep it on a battlefield that the enemy can still operate. But when you say things out of your mouth, he can't talk out loud anymore. So when you take it to a battle, come on now, when you take it to a battlefield and a space that he can't operate anymore, you start changing the narrative. You start switching things around because he don't work there no more. He has no jurisdiction when you start speaking things out of your mouth. This, I'm telling you right now, this is going to be heavy, so you're going to need to track with me the whole time. But he wants you just to keep it up here because the Bible talks about taking thoughts captive that the enemy sends. So he's going to send doubt. He's going to send fear. But when he sends fear and said, I'm not fearful, but I, am, I trust in the one who made me, and I have confidence from the inside of me that comes from the whole, what are you going to do? Some of us, we just, it's just all thoughts. We're just hoping and praying that maybe it'll work out, I think. Maybe this thing will, will work with me. But the Bible says in Romans 4, 17, you can speak to things that are not as though they were. So here's the thing you have to know. As long as you keep it up here, the enemy's not worried about it. He's not worried about that thing that God told you at conference or two years ago as long as it's just up here. He ain't worried about it. But he knows that since you have power to give life and death to things by what you say, he's fighting as hard as he can to get you in your mind to think, that's crazy. Don't say that out loud. People will think you're weird. That's a little much. Wouldn't that be weird if you said that? But some of you today are going to get some confidence that I don't care what he's trying to say to me, but I'm going to start stating faith. I'm going to start speaking things out of my mouth. And God, I will see it come to pass. If you believe it right now, can you give our God a shout of praise? Oh, come on, keep going. Let him know right now. You ain't going to keep me quiet no more. You ain't going to shut me up. Now, there was this little thing that, that happened at conference. We started saying this. We say, everywhere it, we go, it is so. Here's what you need to know. This isn't founded on our just good ideas or good thoughts. This is scripture and saying that if God said it, then I'm settled. Like, this isn't, I want to be very clear, this is not name it and claim it. Because some of y'all out here talking, I got a Mercedes, I got a Benz, I got, no, that's not like, you just making up stuff. And God doesn't bless you to stun on people. So that's not how, that's the whole message right there. Anyways, 
Mercedes faith? I don't know, maybe. Anyways. But what you have to understand is when you start speaking things out of your mouth, it changes the narrative. Now, some of you think this is just like a good theory, a good idea. Look at the scripture we just read. Go back to Mark, and I'm going to take this all the way through for you. Look, look at this story in Mark. This blind man walks up to Jesus. Well, first, he's, he's off to the side. It said he's sitting on the side of the road, and he hears Jesus walking by, and he says, when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet. Many people yelled at him. This is what happens when you start stating faith, when you start saying stuff that don't look like what everybody else sees. There will be people in your life that are like, yeah, I wouldn't, really? Like, let's make a, really? From like on the north side of Tulsa to a grocery store to like an arena? Like, really? Like, really? Like white, black, yellow, like every color in one place? Really? Really? You're going to pay off that building like in six months? Really? There will be people who will, who will try to get you to be quiet, that will try to silence your crazy faith, that will try to say, hey, I don't, and this is why you need to check your circle, because if you don't have faith to roll with me where I'm going, holler at your boy. But as for me and my house, we will serve the world, Lord, and we will see our plans come to pass. It's the powers when you start stating faith. And here's the thing. Furthermore, there will be times where others discourage you, but there will be times where a very real sense of it's yourself discouraging you, you discouraging you. It's, I, I don't know if this is going to work out. And it, I thought God said at this age I would be married by now and or I would have this amount of money or I would, wouldn't be in this place or I'd have that, that job that I always, or my kids, they would have worked out. I thought like, but here's the thing. You cannot allow what others say and what you see to keep you from stating your faith. I'm going to say it again. You cannot allow what others say and what you currently see to keep you from stating your faith. Very practically, blind Bartimaeus couldn't see. So if he was going to look at his situation and then determine if he was going to have faith or not, we would never have this story in the Bible. Some of you are looking at things right now and they don't look right and it seems a little blurry and it seems a little off, but you cannot allow what you are currently seeing to keep you from speaking what God has said. You, you can't. That, that, that. You'll find yourself in a place of always being discouraged, of always needing God to prove it to you or, or just give me. If you give me how it's going to look, God, then I'll take the step. But that's not it. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. So that means that if you don't have the whole picture, it's a great opportunity to get your faith in action and start saying things that don't look like what they are. Some of you, you, you need to go very practically. You need to go and start writing. Every, think of everything that's wrong, and you need to start writing the opposite. My husband can communicate so clearly and express love to me in a way that is unparalleled to anybody else. See, y'all laughing, but this is what you're dealing with right now. I am so qualified for this job, it's not even funny. And I will get it, and it's going to be a testament to God's grace when I get in the position. It's so crazy how I can come from where I came from, but I'm going to be in that college, and I'm going to be over that college one day. Quit playing with me. Come on. We got to start stating faith. We got to... We got to start speaking things out. We got to, even if it sounds crazy, if it feels like, I don't know if this is weird. And this is, ver this is very real for me right now. Me and my wife. Like this, anytime anybody gets on this stage, we talk about when we're um, talking in, in our team of, of forming messages and sermons that we don't ever want to talk about something that's fake or that we're not actually experiencing. And that's the way I had a completely different message. And then last week I was like, you know you just made that up. Come on, I'm trying to deal with this. So I was like, oh, okay, okay. So at conference, uh, me and my wife, we, we were there and it was amazing. And we're leaving the last day of conference. And if you don't know, at conference, we got this word on the, literally the last day that we can't go back. Like, we can't go back, we're moving here. And so in 24 hours, we're like, yo, we switching locations, we meet here now, and it was so amazing. 
So we go home. Uh, during conference, we stayed just right up the street at my in-laws' house to stay because they lived close. We lived far away. So I was like, let's just stay here. It'll be easy being here early in the mornings. Well, we, we get here after conference, and we're, we go to the house because we're going to stay there one more night just to get our things packed up. And we're sitting there. Me and my wife are talking, and uh, we're like, Why, are you feeling like the we can't go back thing? She's like, yeah, I don't know what that is. It's weird. And so how do, we just started talking like, are you feeling? We just felt kind of off. So we go, in, in our ha we go home, and we, we get our things unpacked. And we wake up the next morning, and we both have this weird sense. Like it feels like this isn't our house. Like, it is our house, but it isn't. Like, it, this, this is where, like, we pay the rent. This is our house. But, like, I feel like, and we started talking, and we both felt the exact same thing. We felt like God said, hey, I need you to pack up because this ain't your house, and you can't go back. So, uh, what's Will, Will, what you, what you mean? I want you to go live with your in-laws. The devil is a liar. You hear what I'm saying? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. But kind of, though. I felt like my in-laws, they know I love them. I'm just joking. That's an easy joke. Like, I couldn't skip past that joke. I love my in-laws. I really do. But I was like, we got a baby? God, like, why would I move into, like, we don't have to. Like, we're doing good. And this is what God said. He said it so clear to me and Abby. And then a friend of ours came up. It hadn't been in our conversation and said the exact same thing. He said, I'm preparing your dream house for you but you have to move out first before I'm gonna give it to you. Now, it's easy to clap, scream, shout, and do a dance, but right now, two and a half months into it, I'm like, hey, God, so, uh, about that thing you said. And here's the thing. I started realizing when people are like, where are you? you don't live at your own house? I'd be like, no, nah, we just, we at a different location now. You know, we, diff we done move, you know, we doing something different right now, you know? Just get some things together, you know what I'm saying? Just like, just saying everything, but, and God said, are you just going to like act like I didn't tell you, so are you going to keep that on the inside of you? And I had to say, you know what, I don't think if you think I'm crazy, I don't worry about what you think about me. I moved out of my house because I'm preparing because he said that he would have things for me that I didn't build or that I didn't do. So we out with our in-laws right now in our little studio bedroom and we preparing for our house. You hear what I'm saying? I'm going to be up here looking crazy. You know, I done did it now. But here's what happens. Some of you will obey what God told you to do, but you'll keep it between you and him. And this is a dangerous space to be in because if he doesn't come through, then nobody knows about it. Oh, my goodness. And this is where you are. God has told you things, but you just had it in your journal, and you ain't even shared it with your husband just in case God don't do it. I'm just going to keep it over here. But I believe that God says, I know the plans that I have for you to give you a hope and a future. Come on, somebody, if you believe that he's going to do what he said he would do. Can you give our God a shout of praise? I'm not staying silent anymore. If God said it, I'm settled. It's just, and some of y'all are like, wow, you really are crazy. Yeah, and you're going to be asking to come over to the crib, and we're going to see if you make it in. If it's... That wasn't Jesus. I'm sorry. But it's crazy until it happens. Here's the thing. Y'all think this funny? I'm going to post on Instagram like this. God did it. No. But in this miracle, it's so clear. And here's why I love the Bible. The Bible is so clear. In this miracle, this blind man walks up to Jesus and Jesus says, what do you want? And if I'm him, I'm like, uh, what do you mean, what do I want? What do you want? Jesus, you know what I want. I've done stumbled over here. I, <laughs> you know what I want, Jesus. Do you think Jesus didn't know what he wanted? You think Jesus don't know what you want? But he said, I want to hear you say it out of your mouth because it's not crazy until you start talking. And the moment he said, Jesus, I want to see, Jesus said, that's all I needed to know. But Al, you can see now. And some of you, you're waiting on God, but he's waiting on you to tell. Is that boy back there? He's waiting on you to say, what do you want? Just tell me. 
Just tell me what it is. Just tell me the thing you're believing for. I know what it is because I'm the one that put it in your heart. But once you start saying it out of your mouth, you would be surprised to see what starts happening. It's, it's stating faith. And some of y'all are in here, you think, it don't take all that. Like, I can just write it down and it'll be... Can I prove to you in this scripture so clearly that there are some seasons God will bring you to where that's exactly what it takes? Look, I'm going to let the Bible preach. Don't look at me crazy. Watch this. Mark 10, 46. Then they reached, our same story. Where did they go? Jericho. I'm about to break this down. Jericho. You remember Jericho? Joshua 6. If you don't know, in Jericho, there's this city that... the Israelites are supposed to take captive of. God's children are supposed to be in this place. And God said, I'm going to give it to you, but there's specific instructions. For six days, once a day, I want you to walk around the walls. Then on the seventh day, walk around seven times. And here's what I want you to do. On the last time you walk around, I want you to play the instruments. I want you to break some clay pots. And there was a simple instruction that was last. He said, I want you to shout. That means that in this miracle in Jericho and the only other recorded miracle in Jericho, the breakthrough only happened when people started talking there are some places that God will bring you to where in this sphere in this time in your life in this season the way God did it before is somebody started talking and the way he's gonna do it right now is when you start stating your faith it's the only other rec miracle recorded in, in Jericho where the linchpin or the, the moment that God waited on for the breakthrough to happen was you had to say something. Like you, you had to take it from just that thing that I wrote down or that thought that's in my head. You, you had to speak it out of your mouth. And some of us, we've gotten so discouraged because it's taken longer than expected. It's, we thought by now, I thought that it would have worked out. I thought that my marriage would have been whole. I thought that I would have been past this. But you're allowing your current situation and what you see to dictate what you're saying. And God is just saying, he's saying, hey, like, I need you to start stating some things. Even though it doesn't currently look like what you thought it would look like, even though you're not where you thought you would be, even though it's been 10 years since it's happened, even though it's been five years since it's happened, even though it's been five weeks, I need you to keep stating your faith. And this is what stating faith is. It's understanding that you'll reach moments where God says, yeah, this, for this season, you're going to have to say it until you see it. You, but you want it to work the other way. You want to see it and then you're going to say it. You, you, wanna, you want it to be lined up perfectly. Let's be very real. You want your marriage to be all worked out and perfectly fine before you start a B group to help people heal with it. You, you want to be on your wedding day talking about we married before you show people a picture of purity and that you're living right and that you're waiting patiently on who God has prepared for you. You, you want to see it first and then be like, oh yeah, it was God. But God doesn't work that way. He say, I need you to say it on the front end so that there's no other way for it to work out except for me to step into that thing. You got to start stating your faith. Everybody say stating faith. Some of you are going to leave here today making a decision that I'm no longer going to stay silent. I'm no longer going to keep it on the inside, worried if it will or will not work out. But I'm going to start stating my faith. Stating faith. It's, it's what comes out of your mouth. It's how you speak about things. It's, and here's the thing. If we truly understood, like think about it, the power of life and death is what you say. Like, what if you really believe that? What if you really believe, like, the thing that you're praying about, that you're asking God to do, what if you believe that what you said could actually change it? What if you believe that you, like, the horrible situation that you're in with your family right now, what if you believe you could start saying things and it would actually change? But here's the thing, I, I, I get it. Sometimes there's moments of discouragement. Sometimes there's situations where you feel like it should have worked out by now I should 
be past this. And maybe there was a point where you were stating your faith. Like there was a point where you were so confident, you were so bold, you would speak to things, you'd be like, I can speak to mountains and they got to move and you just shift and stuff all over the world. But now you've, you've grown quiet. You're a little timid to, to say things. It's like, yeah, I, last time I said that though, it didn't work out and people kind of thought I was weird and people thought that I was off and you've, you've, get, you've gotten discouraged with what you would say. Some of you are like, I don't even know what I would say. Like, I, I, wanna, I want to have crazy faith. I want to be able to step out and say things and have that boldness and that confidence to, to speak it out and to just to say it, but I, I don't even know what I would say. You know, there's another guy in the Bible that felt that exact same way. His name was Moses. He's literally talking to God. God asked him to have crazy faith. He asked him, there's, the children of Israel have been in slavery for 400 years. And he says, hey, you're going to be the one to go back and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. He's like, uh, yeah, no. He had a stutter, in case you didn't know. That wasn't me. That was Moses. <laughs> he said, God, I don't, I don't even know what I would say. Like, what, what would I say? What would I do? How would I... And this is the place you may be at. Like, I don't, if I'm going to have crazy faith, what would I say? How would I even do it? Like, I don't even know what I, would, what I would do. I don't even know how I would go about it. But look, look what the scripture says, and I love this. It's Exodus 3, 13. But Moses protested. If I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has set, sent me to you, they will ask me, what's his name? Who? Who is it? Who told you that? Just like when you start stepping out in crazy faith, people, what? You gonna do what? Who? Where? He says, what's his name? He said, what should I tell him? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Now, I need you to lock in with me for the next 12 minutes because I'm about to unfold something that I believe has the power and potential to change your life forever. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna illustrate it, but I, I need you to track. This is gonna be very, very detailed, but it's gonna really help you. When I call someone's name, my son's name, his name's Arlo Phoenix. Arlo is a variant of Charles. It means fortified, strong. Phoenix means new beginning. When I say Arlo, he turns around and he looks at me and he's ready to either receive instruction for me to pick him up, for him to whatever. When I say his name, he responds. This is a very simple truth that you would understand. When someone says your name, you turn around, ready to hear whatever it is they have to say. This is so important, one, in just a, a sidebar, why you are intentional with what you name your children, because it's the first prophetic word spoken over them. So some of you, your name is Lagonda Duanche, and I don't even know what that is. And it means ball out. That's great, but... <laughs> but what I did is I decided that you couldn't say his name without purpose being assigned to it. You wouldn't have a choice. So when I say his name, he turns around ready to respond or hear whatever it is I'm going to say. The same is true for you. When someone says your name, you turn around ready to hear whatever it is they have to say, whether to help someone out, whether you're in a moment, my wife will be like, Charles, and I know that's me to mean Arlo pooping everywhere, or I need you to come help me with something, but I turn around because she said my name ready to respond. The same is true with God when it comes to stating faith. When you say God, he turns around ready to do two things, act or allow. I'm going to help you with something. This is the nature of God that is all-powerful and sovereign. He's ready to act or allow. So God does never cause things, but he is so sovereign and above all of us that he turns around when you say his name, when you say, God, I need you, when you say, God, I need help in this situation. He turns around ready to do whatever it is you ask him to do next. Are you tracking with me? So I want you to think about this. God, he turns around to you. What do you need? This is the posture of our God. This is grace. God, what do you need? God, 
What do you need? This is, this is the nature of God. I want to read the scripture to you again and point out something so crazy. He asked, what's your name? God replied, I am. Now, this scripture is speaking to two things. It's speaking to the eternal nature of God. It's a Hebrew word that means I was, I am, and I will be. But he also said, my name is I am. Track with me. God. He turns around, ready to act or allow. What's another way you say his name? I am. He says, yes. What do you need? I am. Sick. I am. God. Yeah, what do you need? Broke. God. God. Yeah, what do you need? I am tired. Well, I... I am anxious. I am overwhelmed. I am insecure. I Some of us are invoking God's presence over and over and over again. And what you have failed to realize is the power of his name he actually put in your hands for him to be whatever it is you need him to be. So let's reverse that thing. When you say, I am, God says, hello, what do you need? And you say, healed, he said, let's do it, baby. When you turn around, when you say, I am, free in the name of Jesus. When you say, I am, all that God called me to be. Oh, come on, somebody. When you say, I am, the righteousness of Christ. When, You don't realize it, but every day you're speaking, you're stating your faith, but really it's being exposed because you're walking around talking about, I am just so over this marriage. You said God's name. You said, I am. Yeah, what do you need? And he's ready. He's there. He's ready to help you. It's his name. But some of us we have to shift how we're talking because you haven't realized you've been you've been stating your faith over and over again you've been saying I'm tired I'm broke I'm worried I'm so insecure but some of you are gonna say I'm blessed I am a child of God I am free in the name of Jesus I am whole and God's gonna turn around and say I got you baby whatever you need in this moment come on if you know that God is ready to turn around and help you with whatever you need can you give our God a shout of praise? Oh, come on, come on. Don't let the devil keep you silent in this moment. You better shout like he's done something for you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. He's kept you quiet too long. And some of you sitting up here, that ain't me, pastor. Yeah, it is, because yesterday you were yelling for a bunch of teenagers in some football shorts. So don't talk about that ain't me. I love you, but it is you. And for the right thing, you'll get up and scream and you'll get up and shout. But what you don't realize is in moments when you stop stating your faith, you're leaving things up to chance. But God wants to step into your situation and change it when you start stating your faith. Here's what I want to do. I want everybody to stand up. We're going to close right now in just a moment. This is so important. If it's not an emergency, I'm going to ask you to stay Stay, I want you to put those I am's on the screen for me real quick. Some of you, actually I want to give you my last point. It says this, in the face of what is, stating faith says I am. In the face of what is, stating faith says I am. Every time you say I am, God turns. And what I want to do right now is I want to just create an atmosphere for just a few moments that I believe is so important. And some of you, you have been stating things over your life that weren't the will of God. 
You've been stating some things that have kept you stuck. You've been stating some things that has kept your marriage from working out. You've been stating things, and it's okay. I'm not coming down on you, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask the band just to play some music and create an atmosphere, and we're going to start declaring these things. We're going to start stating some things that regardless of what it looks like right now, oh, come on, regardless of what people have said about me, regardless of what my parents said I would be, regardless of how my life has looked before, it doesn't matter because when I say I am, I'm not only talking to myself, the creator of the universe is stepping down into my situation. Come on, so we're gonna do take a moment right now, and I don't know which one you need to declare. I don't know what it is for you, but some of you, you need to decide that I am. I am, come on, we're gonna start saying these. I am a child of God. Come on, I am courageous. I am healed. I am set apart. I am worthy. I am a masterpiece. I am loved. I am chosen. I am anointed. Come on, I am victorious. I am holy. I am free. I am whole. I am confident. I am secure. I am empowered. I am loved. I am a temple. I am worthy. I am purpose. Come on, let's go back to the top. I'm a child of God. I am courageous. I am healed. I am set apart. I am worthy. I am a masterpiece. I am love. Oh, come on, start saying it. Come on, come on. What is it for you? What is it that you need to say over your life? Declare it right now. I am all that God has called me to be. Come on, don't worry about the screen. What do you need right now? What do you need in your life? What do you need right now in your marriage? What do you need right now in your family? Come on, say it right now. I am everything that God has called me to be. I am one that is called for this very moment. I am what God has said is gonna happen, Lord God. Come on, come on, declare it, declare it, declare it, declare it. Come on, come on, come on. Some of you, this, this is the moment. Like you're, you're waiting for some magical thing to happen. Like, okay, God, I'm, I just want to feel it. And then, but when you start stating it, when you start saying the thing that you've been doubtful about, when you start saying the thing that's plagued you for so long, when you start stating the thing, something is going to happen. Something is going to shift in your life. And today is the moment that it changes. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a moment and we're just going to start praising God for what he's done. Like we're just going to start saying, God, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. I thank, thank him in advance for what it doesn't look like right now. Lord, I thank you that the marriage is healed. I thank you that the business is a success. I thank you, Lord God. Oh, come on. I thank you, Lord God, that I have everything that I need. Lord God, I thank you that you have prepared me for this moment. I thank you, Lord God, that this building will be paid off. Oh, come on, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that people will gather in your house and worship you, Lord Jesus. I thank you that families are whole, Lord God. I thank you that families are restored right now. Come on, y'all. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have won the victory. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray for everybody in this room. Because some of you have allowed those thoughts that the enemy would send, you've let them move in. And some of you, they've been there for so long that you don't even realize that they're there anymore. It's just, but right now we're gonna pray and those things are gonna be broken off of your life. The words that he's tried to speak over you, the words that someone has said over you. Some of y'all feel this right now. Some of you, you are in this room and either family members or friends have said stuff about you and you've believed it about yourself of you're just annoying and you're just too much and you should just be quiet. No, in this moment, you're gonna, in the moment we're gonna pray and God's gonna start breaking chains off of your life. God's gonna start breaking those words off of your life. Come on, every hand lifted. Lord God, I thank you that in this moment, Lord Jesus, that there are chains that are being broken off of people's lives. The words that have been spoken have no power. The words that have been said, they cannot stay. I thank you for doubt, it has to go. Fear, it has to go. Worry, it has to go. Insecurity, you have no place here. Come on, come on, y'all. But I thank you that what you have said will stand. What you have said will stand. What you have said will stand. But I thank you that in this moment, you are here. You are here. Come on, let's sing about that. Thank you so much for watching Transformation Church's YouTube. And I just want you to take another step. If this is feeding you, join Transformation Nation. 
That's everybody that doesn't live here in Tulsa watching live with us on Sunday mornings. Gather your family, let's make this thing an every week situation. And please, share. Share if it has impacted your life. There is somebody that is waiting for you to share this with them. And transformation is only a click away. And there's one more thing I would ask you to do. Pray about giving. If you wanna help us take this message all around the world and represent God to lost and found people for one reason, transformation in Christ, you can do that right now by clicking the give button. I cannot wait to see you the next time we're here. Live a transformed life.